And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel. This is your boy Fly Island Guy. Today we are back in Chaplow, Ontario, and we are slowly making our way out of Ontario and heading more into the central part of Canada, into the prairies, uh, and uh, eventually heading out west. This is gonna be a Vatsim flight. I'm hoping we still get coverage. Uh, right now we are. We're around. Yeah. See, this is us here. And uh, we're gonna be heading over to Thunder Bay today. Um, as you can see, it's not much in the way of traffic here in Canada. Uh, but there is good ATC coverage. So um, once we kind of get nearer to Thunder Bay. Uh, hopefully, if this controller stays online, um, we'll be talking with the controller of Winnipeg Center. So, before we get started, uh, let's go ahead and let's take a look at the weather on the way. And of course, looking at our trusty windy.com as usual. I uh, like to bring up the rain and thunder. Let's see what's happening up here in Canada. There's not much going on at all. We look absolutely clear skies here in Chaplow. And uh, yeah, we're heading over to Thunder Bay right here. 16 degrees. If take a quick look at Thunder Bay. And I'll just take that in. Uh, actually, let's do CYQT. So, Thunder Bay International Airport, things are looking good. Winds out of 290 at 6 knots. Tons and tons of visibility. Uh, temperatures 18 degrees. Looking absolutely beautiful over there. So, it's going to be a nice flight. Um, I'm on Unicom right now until we actually get in the air. So, I'm just going to be announcing my position, even though it's probably not going to be much people out there to actually hear me all right so let's set our flaps and i'm going to bring up the chaplo map over here we're going to be departing runway 28 today so runway 28 uh, you basically have to do an about face And we're going to head back onto the runway. And, uh, yeah, we're going to head back onto the runway. We're going to backtrack uh, runway 23. And then we're going to backtrack again onto on runway 28. And then we'll get out of here. Uh, what we might do, actually, let me announce my position. Charlie 9082, uh, backtracking on runway 23. This is Charlie 9082, is also taxiing to uh, runway 28 for takeoff. So, just announcing our position real quick, just in case there's somebody in the area. But yeah, man, it's, uh, so, um, things have been pretty interesting over the past few weeks. I'm just trying to really keep busy, um, as, uh, if you guys have been following my channel, you probably know that I lost my job, so, um, it's been a little bit of an adjustment, uh, just trying to trying to keep busy and you know not be too concerned and that sort of thing i have some personal projects going on right now that i'm trying to get done and i'm um, really just here contemplating a career change charlie 8 9 or 8 2 uh backtracking on runway 28 Yeah, so as I said, I'm contemplating a career change, looking uh, 
I think I'm looking to get out of the IT space professionally. Um, still kind of want to do some software development, but uh, I think I'm, I'm kind of over being a developer now. <laughs> um, so that's pretty much where, where we stand right now. In fact, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn around right here. Uh, it's got like two little areas on the runway where you can turn around. Um, you don't really need to use this whole runway. Charlie and Runway 2 uh, lined up on active runway 28. Alright, so now the way here, <coughs> sorry, we'll go strobe lights on, landing lights and come on as well. We'll set our rudder trim. And yeah, pretty much have to do a straight out departure. Uh, um, Trying to get on our flight plan, so I'm gonna get up in the air, then we'll do a little bit more talking, and uh, we'll go from there. Charlie eight nine ray two, uh, departing straight out runway two eight. So gonna set our takeoff power. I'm just gonna hold it straight. Uh, I forgot my yoke. There we go. Just keeping some forward pressure, just a little bit. Now let's rotate. Airborne time logged. Just about to say gear up. <laughs> there ain't no gear. There's no retractable gear on this. Uh, I forgot to set my fuel condition level to max. There you go. Alright, climb out is looking good. And uh, just sort of follow the. Flight directors on. All right, let's go. Flaps up. Let's keep that nose pulled up. Don't sink. Don't sink. There we go. And let's just hold flight level change for now. Your damper and autopilot can come on. And we'll get an app mode on as well. Not really much to do there. All right, so we're pretty much in a good position as far as takeoff is concerned. So we're just gonna enjoy the, the flight out. We're just basically carrying some cargo. That's really much, that's really all we're doing today. Um, I think it's some mail that we're carrying over to Thunder Bay. Flight time for today is going to be about uh, one hour and 53 minutes. Bit of a long one. Uh, but for now, just kind of enjoying this chill flight. Um, I've really been enjoying the, the channel. Like everything's been kind of settled in. Um, Like the performance of the like, computers have been good. Uh, Peter, he has to come on. Let's just get that on real quick. Getting now, we're like getting out of summer, so the temperature's gonna be cooler. Uh, Peter is all right here. We're just gonna reduce our power for climb. But yeah. Um, yeah. So everything's just been been good. Um, I was able to test out my mobile setup. Um, that video should be coming probably in the next week or so. Um, 
uh, performance has actually been really good. When you guys see it, you're gonna. Well, this that video is gonna come out before this one. Um, when you guys see it, you'll notice kind of how much better the, the performance is on the laptop. It actually, performs better than my desktop, which was a little surprising to me. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, uh, I am considering a career change. I don't. I, I'm, I'm not. Uh, I haven't a hundred percent settled on what that's gonna be. Um, I still want to want to stay in software development, but I'm just uh, thought of going back and working for another company. It's just not uh, it's not appealing to me right now. So um, I'm just gonna do something new, go into something different. Um, I'm in a great position to do so. Might end up going back to school or something. In the meantime, just want to focus on my personal projects. Also. Uh, focus on growing my channel as well, you know, like, um, I was hoping to kind of have more subscribers by this point, but I still have <laughs> a lot more than I thought I would ever get, uh, 300 plus subscribers, um, that's pretty amazing to me, um, but, you know, I'd love to kind of hit that 1,000 mark, I got, I got plans, I want to do stuff like like live streaming and, and, and that sort of thing. Like I can't, uh, I don't want to do it right now <laughs> with the amount of subscribers that I have. But I do have a very special video coming uh, in the near future. Uh, I can't wait to put that one out. Because uh, it's going to be a pretty heavy departure from what, what I've been putting out to date. Um, but it's a really awesome experience that I had recently. Um, that's related to aviation and I really honestly can't wait to show you guys so that's going to be awesome uh, in the meantime though uh, let's have a quick discussion about where we are heading today so also just kind of keeping an eye on uh, keep it now on Vatsim as well um it's going to be a long time before I actually reach uh, the controller coverage, so I'm just hoping they stay online until then. we are pretty, pretty uh, upset if they end up like going offline, but we'll see what happens. So today uh, we are heading over to Thunder Bay, Ontario, which I thought the show was a TV show until <laughs> so I remembered that uh, that show was actually called Danger Bay, not Thunder Bay. I don't know if anybody's old like me, um, you may have remembered this show it used to come on in the afternoons. It was a show called Danger Bay. It was a Canadian show though, and uh, it was basically about an environmentalist who was kind of investigating different uh, nature-related issues. Um, I might download it and watch it again though. It's pretty interesting. But let's look up Thunder Bay, Ontario. I'll do a quick, quick chat about that. I wish I could just find something that's just strictly about Thunder Bay, you know? Um, let's check out this article here. So, 15 things to do in Thunder Bay. So I'm going to kind of move away from what I normally do, just sort of discuss, uh, like just discuss some facts about Thunder Bay. I don't know what, the clouds are looking amazing today. Um, let's go just get more side view action. There you go. Sit behind the cargo. <laughs> Alright, so... 15 of the best things to do in Thunder Bay. Alright, so... Northwest in Ontario's largest city, Thunder Bay sits along Lake Superior. 
giving it its nickname the Lakehead. The city is the bridge between the prairies of Canada and the Atlantic Ocean and the gateway to the region. Thunder Bay is arguably the most visited city in all of Northern Ontario as it has so much to offer and there's something for everyone here from magnificent natural scenery to fascinating historic architecture. Outdoor lovers, shopaholics, foodies and historians will all enjoy holidaying in the city regardless of what you are after. And these are the 15 best things to do in Thunder Bay. So number one is see a sleeping giant. Not literally, but a mesa and sill formation that is named the sleeping giant because it looks like a giant sleeping on its back. The best views are seen from the cliffs at Squaw Bay. The sleeping giant is one of the top seven wonders of Canada. It's located within the Sleeping Giant Provincial Park, which has the most dramatic and steep cliffs in Ontario. The park itself has plenty to do, including fishing, cycling, hiking, and camping. In fact, there are over 200 campsites throughout the park. So you can also learn about the fur trade and visit the reconstruction of the Fort William Fur Trade Post and learn about the city's economic past. The post existed in 1816, and today is, na is a National Historic Site of Canada. The trade post is in the Fort William Historical Park, which is a living museum. Wander around the park and look at the reconstructed buildings and historians dressed in period clothing, reenacting what life was like during the fur trade industry. At its peak, the trade post was a community that was filled with tradesmen. The historical park is now home to one of the largest amphitheaters in the country. You can also just enjoy the views. You can enjoy spectacular views of Thunder Bay from the Terry Fox Memorial. And uh, if you don't know about Terry Fox, he was kind of one of Canada's most famous athletes. Uh, he only had one leg, but he was like a marathon runner. Um, so the Terry Fox Memorial and Lookout, which is located on the outskirts of the city, the monument sits in a park overlooking the Highway 17 and the city. The Terry Fox Memorial was created to mark the spot where the famous athlete ended his run, but since been moved to its current location around 4 kilometers away. And the monument depicts Terry Fox atop a pedestal that lists all the places he passed through on his cross-country run. There is also a tourist information center on site. If you're a nature lover, the 263-hectare Current River Greenway sits along the Current River in the north end of the city. The massive green area is a great place to go to get away from it all and enjoy the scenery. There's a number of areas within the Greenway, including Birch Point Park, uh, Current River Park, and Evergreen Park. It also features a, cons a conservation area. Uh, Cascades Conservation Area with hiking trails and beautiful landscapes and you could also enjoy some magnificent views at the Green Bay at the Green Bay's Bluff Scenic Lookout which is open all year. As well there's also a sandy beach, a playground and a picnic table at the Boulevard Lake Park. If you're into waterfalls the 40 meters cascading Akabika Falls is truly a place to be completely lost. The beauty of it all, the waterfall is located 30 meters west of Thunder Bay on the Kamenistiqua River. The falls have been nicknamed the Niagara of the North due to, due to its size and accessibility. The name Kakabeka means waterfall over a cliff in Ojibwe. The rock that faces the falls features some of the oldest fossils in existence today, dating back some 1.6 billion years. As a result of the rock sensitivity, there's no entrance to the gorge beneath the falls. You can also explore the city center, um, aka downtown Thunder Bay South, aka the South, the South Core. That's the center of the city and a great place to explore. It's centered on Victoriaville Civic Center and is home to a number of landmarks. So many government buildings are located here as are the major employers, but it's also an area of arts and culture, being home to numerous cultural attractions like the Brady Street Art Gallery and the Thunder Bay Public Library. You'll also see many places of worship in the South Core demonstrating again the city's diversity. These include the Gothic Revival, St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, 
St. Patrick's Cathedral and St. Paul's Anglican Church. If you're interested, you could also surround yourself in history. Uh, the Thunder Bay Historical Museum is located in the former Fort William Police Station, which is a beautiful classical revival building. The building itself is a work of art, as is much of what's inside of it. Step through the doors of the museum and learn about various aspects of local history within the <laughs> of local history. Sorry, within the collection are dolls, furniture, pictures, maps, and plans. And there's also 130 meters of linear records. Also, within the collection are 150,000 photographic images of the city and its surrounding area throughout time. Don't forget to also have a look at its historic fire truck. Now, if you're not a history buff, but you like to have some fun, you can go to the fair. Um, this can only be done in August, so... <laughs> well, you're out of luck well, when this video is recorded. Uh, this can only be done in August when the city hosts the Canadian Lakehead Exhibition. The annual fair is great for visitors of all, visitors of all ages, though it is a massive draw for families. Walk around the fair and look at art by regional artisans or shop in its concessions. There's also a midway with games, rides, and food stalls. And on the grounds of the exhibition are a few buildings that are open year-round. These include the Heritage Building, Coliseum Building, Sports Dome, and a famous Players Silver City Theater. If you're a foodie or you just like to eat, the Hoito Restaurant is the oldest restaurant in Thunder Bay dating back to 1918. It's also arguably the oldest establishment in the entire country. But the restaurant is located on the lower level of the historic Finnish Labour Temple and serves Finnish Canadian cuisine. It's most famous for its Finnish pancakes, which are served with maple syrup, sugar, sprinkles, or strawberry sauce. The Finnish Labour Temple is also a landmark that was once one of Canada's largest workers' halls. It is designated as a National Historic Site of Canada. Or, although it's not big, the Thunder Bay Art Gallery is definitely interesting. In fact, in contemporary work, it specializes in contemporary work by uh, First Nation artists across Northwestern Ontario. The gallery sits on the campus of Confederation College. It not only has a permanent collection, but also hosts traveling exhibitions. The Thunder Bay Art Gallery uh, works with and promotes the work of both local and regional artists. It features three galleries that change every six weeks. You know, this you could spend the day in a park. Um, not only is Centennial Park a park, but it's also a living museum. The park features replicas of 20th century logging camp equipment and homes. And in addition to the historic logging camp, uh, Centennial Park also has its recreational trails, a craft shop, and a playground. There's even an indoor picnic area. So in the summer months, you could take a ride on the Muskeg Express train or visit the animal farm. Come in the winter and go cross-country skiing or tobogganing. Speaking of skiing, this is of course only available if you're in Thunder Bay in the winter, although Lac Lamont does offer hiking and mountain biking. Lac Lamont boasts 17 ski runs that are equally divided into beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And the longest run is 2.4 kilometers, and the highest vertical rise is 229 meters. Whether you are a complete beginner or are used to double back diamond runs, you will enjoy skiing here. You could also go tubing, snowshoeing, and back bike riding. You can look at flowers as well. And since 1967, the Centennial Conservatory has been open to the public. If you're a plant or flower a lover, a visit here is not to be missed. Wander around the greenhouses and look at the tropical flowers, plants, and trees. And there's even a cactus room on site. There are pathways with benches throughout the conservatory as well as a wishing well that is filled with coins from wishful thinkers. You can also canoe in the wilderness, um, head west out of Thunder Bay to the Katiko Provincial Park, which is renowned for its superb canoeing. 
The 4,760 square kilometer wilderness, wilderness park sits along the southern border of the Superior National Forest. Katiko Provincial Park is truly magnificent and offers some of the best canoeing on the planet. It has over 2,000 campsites that are spread throughout 600 lakes, making a true nature lover's paradise. The park is home to some impressive wildlife, and you may spot a moose, bobcat, cougar, or black bear. It's also home to raccoons, chipmunks, rabbits, beavers, and bald eagles. Last but not least, uh, outside of Thunder Bay, uh, Wemet Canyon is around 60 kilometers northeast of the city. The large gorge is 100 meters deep, 150 meters wide, and 2,000 meters long. Walk through the Wemet Canyon and be in awe by the stunning scenery. There's also trails above the canyon that offer magnificent views overlooking it. The canyon is believed to date back a billion years when it was split by advancing glaciers. Nearby is the privately owned Eagle Canyon that boasts a zip line and two foot bridges. So that's some information on uh, Thunder Bay. That's where we're going to be going. And we have a little ways to go, but we have reached our cruising altitude of 12,000 feet. And uh, we are going to stay here. Uh, until we relink uh, the controller um, that's going to be a little while all right so i will catch you guys when i get back and uh in the meantime just going to enjoy the views of northern ontario um i'm <laughs> actually going to be heading back to ontario soon um i'm going to be spending more and more time there over the next I don't know, bro. Well, definitely. So <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how things go. But in the meantime, um, I'll catch you guys when I get back, and uh, talk to you guys then. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We have started our descent. Well, be long since <laughs> we've descended already. Uh, into Thunder Bay. I guess the airport off in the distance. Let's just uh, zoom out here. Yeah, I think that's the airport right there. Kind of curious to see what things look like as we get closer. Um, I'd love to see if we get like uh, I don't know more of like an urban area as we get close just checking here real quick i can see if the population of thunder bay is uh 110,000. so uh we should be we should get more kind of views as we kind of get into this area uh let's take a quick look at our approach today we are going to be doing the uh, Arnav GNSS uh, Zulu Runway 25 approach. Um, so right now we're just heading towards this Gabber Waypoint, and then uh, we're just going to make a sharp left turn, and we are going to come towards Canav and then make the right turn uh, onto Bearing 254, and we're going to head towards the runway now I think I'm not supposed to be making this sharp a turn I actually forgot my flight plan I think we were supposed to do a an arrival this Nota 3 arrival and yeah yeah we were way off actually if we took that arrival it would have had us pretty much come in straight towards the runway instead of doing this weird turn that we have that we're doing out here Uh, oh, looks like some fog came, came over us. I don't know what's going on with the sim right now. And I, I don't mean this in a bad way, but holy smokes, is it performing, like, beautifully. I don't want to jinx it, but, like, you guys probably aren't going to see this once you see the recording, just because OBS is going to introduce some stutters, but, like, this is absolutely 
buttery smooth right now. I can't even explain to you guys how how smooth this is. So we're starting on to the base leg of our approach. Just making that sharp turn as I mentioned. And uh, we're gonna I think we're gonna head towards this is the Canav waypoint. Yeah, Canav. So this is Thunder Bay. Looks like we're going to be kind of coming out over the main metropolitan area. Coming in for a landing, and that's cool. Uh, should have gone into approach mode. It's probably too late now. So I'm just going to descend a little bit. I oh, know, we're actually, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. We're actually low. Alright, gonna make that turn. Looks like we're dealing with a little bit of fog in the area right now. Um, it's pretty interesting. But uh, we're gonna be lined up on the runway. Um, our glide path is alive. And we are below the glide path, which is good. Alright folks, so we're all lined up on the runway. Just gonna bring on my taxi map. Coming in runway 25. This is a pretty uh pretty busy airport that had like a uh, seven thousand foot runway that we're gonna be landing on. Uh, but we're gonna wanna stop as early as possible. in order to uh, make uh, Taxiway Bravo or Taxiway Charlie. Both of those will get us to the correct, uh, oh, those get us to the, the main apron. All right. So we've started our descent towards the runway. And I just realized that I haven't been taking a screenshot yet. Um, so, we're gonna get our flaps down just so we can slow down a little bit. We're gonna come outside. There. there we go, good to go. It's kind of weird, don't know what's happening there. And it looks like we're dealing with about a 20 knot crosswind. Uh, or well, sort of a headwind slash crosswind. We've actually been dealing with that um, for the whole flight. Pretty much had like a 50 or 60 knot headwind the entire flight, which is not good. Which probably really slowed us down. So we're going to see how much time we were in the air once we get the uh, on-air report, once we land. In pre preparation for landing though, uh, we're going to go ahead and I'm gonna put our throttles to max. Uh, fuel is looking good. Just set our RPM. We can go flaps. Let's go flaps full. We can enjoy the sights on the way in. Looks like we have another ship on the water here. Some some 2D, some 2D uh, boat action.
I'm going to try and download the add-on for boats. Um, especially when I'm flying through the Caribbean. That's one of the things that you kind of really miss. Right, so we are all lined up. Ooh, look at this. Got some railways below us. Take a screenshot of that. Maybe. Something a little more lively. getting tossed around pretty good up here though. Beautiful approach though. Looks like we're about to cross over a football field. If anybody knows what this uh, football field is below us, let me know. Sky here. All right, I'm gonna get in a position to kind of hand fly this guy in. Let's turn off our uh, yaw damper and autopilot. This is my aircraft. Sorry. So it was a what was a 20 knot crosswind is now just a couple knots, but we're still getting a lot of bumps and chops on the way in there. I just got the nose of the aircraft slightly pointed to the wind. Pretty high right now. And I'm moving a little right of the runway. now and let's try and smooth out this landing as much as possible Thrust thrust took a little longer to kick in than I wanted. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Thunder Bay, Ontario. Local time is about uh, quarter to quarter to twelve. So we're gonna park the aircraft and get ourselves some lunch. If anybody knows of a good uh, restaurant here in Thunder Bay, let me know, because I am absolutely interested. <laughs> you know, for future reference, asking for a friend, you know? All right, so strobes and landing lights can come off. Put the taxi lights on. Probably should have parked back over on the other side. So this is the main terminal here. No aircraft here though. And I'm not seeing any aircraft parked here either. So let's just go to this little house here in the distance and uh, we'll call it a day, folks. This has been an awesome approach. It's been an awesome flight, man. It's been like really calm, really chill. All 
All right. Parking rig set. And we can go ahead and fend the old props. We can soon come off and we can go ahead and kill the engines. Engine off time logged. The flight is finished. It has been monitored by on air. Awesome. That is it. What a beautiful flight. Um, I can't believe I've been flying the, the Kodiak for so long. And I um, absolutely love this aircraft, man. I don't know why there's people talking. Because this is a cargo flight. Small things, though. Um, that's about it, folks. We have landed safely here in Thunder Bay, Ontario. Uh, we'll see where, where things go next. Unfortunately, the controller went offline for... Uh, I had a chance to even talk to them, so no that sim for me, unfortunately, but uh, such is life. Alright folks, thank you so much, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Share these videos if you see fit, because I'm really looking for some more subscribers, and I just love to chat with people, so hit me up, you know? Um, outside of that, I'll be back with a new video sometime in the near future, probably in the next couple of days. So be sure to check back. Outside of that, this is your boy Flyland Guy saying, stay safe, and most importantly, stay fly. I'm out.